Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another one of Chris's Beer Reviews. I got a special guest here today. He's my brother, Marcus. Hey! A.K.A. Markushkala. Markush. A.K.A. Ernie. George. A.K.A. George. Elmo. And A.K.A. CEO of the Death Film Productions on YouTube. Fuck yeah. As I have introduced in the past. All right, people, we're going to be doing something medieval today. All right. For the longest time, I've been wanting to try, you got it, you clicked on the link, a mead, all right? Not just any mead, a real mead. Okay, so this is from the brewery Trafalgar Ales and Meads. I've probably done about five, six, seven reviews of beers from them that I said that I would never, ever try again. <laughs> but everybody seems to tell me that they got this mead right, and it is worth trying. I, I don't remember what the price is. It's probably around like 11 bucks, something like that. Uh, we got an 8.5%. 500 milliliter kind of looking, uh, I don't know, mini keg, mini growler kind of deal. It's not really a growler. It doesn't have that reseal top. But, uh, yeah, Trafalgar Ales and Mead straight from, uh, I don't remember. I think it's Barry, Ontario. <laughs> Barry, Ontario? I don't he know. doesn't know. No, I don't know where it is anymore. I think it was Oakville. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Oakdale. All right, so I'm not going to read the ingredients. Um Meads are very basic. They don't have very much carbonation in them. They don't taste too much like beer. Um, my brother here has never had one. Fortunately, I had the pleasure of tasting this uh, before I did a review, so I know that this is going to be good. On the back here, it says the world's oldest alcoholic beverage. Do you want to read the rest? I do. And because it's medieval, and it's, you know, mead, I'm going to... I'm gonna. It's a medieval. Medieval. I'm going to do it with a nice brawly... Viking accent, the world's oldest alcoholic beverage, derived from the simple mixture of fermented honey, water, and yeast. The art of mead making reaches back thousands of years, peaking to the medieval ages. The spiritual and cultural significance of mead has been celebrated through the ages. Traf Trafalgar's mead, Bregard's <laughs> Trafalgar, it's Trafalgar. Trafalgar <laughs> mead, Bregard adds premium <coughs> hops and malt to the ancient recipe, creating a delicious, refreshing drink unlike any other. Ale, ale. All right. Well, I just realized something hardcore. We've been talking about this beer for about two and a half minutes now. We don't even have glasses. So if you could just please grab that glass from right over there, yeah. and I'll grab this other freshly rinsed glass from a glass from over here. We're good. Awesome. All right. So this is a meat. It's going to be floral. Okay. Pause. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's going to be drinking it out of your typical, typical. Um, Stein, basically, uh, this is good for aerating uh, weedy beers and stuff like that. That's weedy, not weedy. Um, I'm going to be drinking mine out of flute glass, which is well known for bringing out the freeness in others. All right, so if I can remember correctly, the average twist for a wine or a champagne should be six spins. But if I can remember correctly, this one was either five or seven. Ooh. One, two, two three. Four, five, six, six seven. seven. There you go. -na -na -na. So, and another thing that everybody knows about this drink is that it's impossible, impossible to take off the top with your hands. Let's put it this way. I got a buddy at the LCBO who's a beer ambassador. He told me that an old lady returned this because she couldn't open the top of the bottle. So that gives you an example of how bad this is to open a model. <laughs> so here we go. This is the only other option. Because it's medieval, we must use our teeth. Medieval. Then for the burly Vikings. It is tough. Like seriously tough. I'm gonna. I don't want to get elbowed in the face. I remember this cork being long, so it's okay if I let go of the bottle. <sighs> all right, this should be all right. Uh, should be able to get it by hand now. There we go. All right. Uh, look at that, look how big that uh, cork is, man. <laughs> hey! Nice. Good to go. That smells different, eh? Yeah, for sure. That's what I thought. I just have to, but what is this fill on the inside of your glass? Don't care. I want to drink. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Here goes the first pour. 
See, you can, it looks carbonated, but it's a little bit more of a kind of like a, I don't know, a softer, kind of fruity looking approach. And the tulip glass. Yeah, I'm pouring that straight in there. No massive carbonation, just to give you an example of how little the carbonation is. I think Mar Ooh, Marcus, wow. Marcus's glass is a little bigger, which is no problem. Cheers. Cheers. See, look, look, look at the difference. Mine is cloudy. Yours is not. So we got a problem here. Problem being is that yours is going to taste like one, and mine is going to taste like the other. So That's true. Remember what we did for that beer review recently? No, that pumpkin beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We just, we just, we just split a drink. Ooh, this is this is ugly looking up here. I gotta do this as fast as possible without feeling like a dummy. Mm -hmm. So intermission. Ah, oh, jeepers! All right, you keep them entertained while I clean a fresh glass. All right? Okay, folks. Well, as he said, one isn't cloudy. If you want to look a little bit closer at that, yeah, it looks like some good shit. Right? Even the smell is different. Then you look onto this, and that is nothing but cloudy goodness. It almost looks like that Hellfest beer. I grab it, but I don't have it. Yeah. All right, we got a fresh rinse glass. Just waiting on the man. Everybody, please forgive the uh, lack of uh, organization here. I'm going to pour them both into one glass for good reason. Ah, Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm, pour I'm just pouring heavily because I want them to mix. Yeah, that looks much better. All right. Now, we have one beer that's cloudy and not cloudy, but it doesn't even look, look no carbonation. Mm -hmm. Wait, wouldn't you be afraid to drink this? No, because it's booze. All right, well, it's I'm usually afraid because if I see no carbonation in my beer, that means that it was a bad brew. Yeah. So let me know what you think of that. Okay, well, the smell. I can't even define the smell. It's very... It's probably very yeasty. Yeah. I was going to say something around those lines. Do you smell the honey? Yeah. Definitely smell bees in there. Bees were actually used in the making of this meat. But now we're killed. That's what makes it meat evil. Meat evil. All right, I'm going to try this out. Very meat. It's meat evil. It's going to be better than you might expect for... Uh, for what it looks like. This is what they used to drink before beer. Ah, before battle! Ah, That's not bad, really. I drink that before going to battle. Or yeah. after battle. Or before um, slaying some women. Yeah. No. <laughs> not slaying. I, I, I meant, you know, slaying was the... The, the, the word in disguise. <laughs> They're raping the fields and pillaging our women. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're raping fields? <laughs> yes. Pillaging women? <laughs> you should pillage the fields and rape the women. Uh, you know what? No, we're not going to do any of that. No. Kind of yeah, you, this is what I'd drink if I was sitting around a big giant table. We're all wearing Viking hats. We all got our big barely beards and, you know. Ugh, we have pig roast in the middle. That's that's all I can. For not having a very good amount of carbonation, you'd really think that that would be a, taste a lot worse. Mm -hmm. It actually tastes very good. Um, I think the most prominent ingredient would be honey. It's just a smooth honey. Yep. That's uh, about it. I mean, do you taste eight point five percent? That's eight point five. Yeah. No. It usually, it's like five or less. Yeah. Usually, an eight point five is like strong. It's very very mild. Very good, though, I have to admit, for something I've never tried. Then again, with stuff on the beer reviews I've never tried before, so... You want to chug it? Fuck yeah! I've already had my fair share, so, I mean, I know what it tastes like. I had a whole bottle of my own a long time ago. I like how when people try to chug a lot of beer, their mouth gets wider. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me all the time, too. <laughs> Good to go, folks. All right, so we need a Viking rating, and we need a average rating. <laughs> well, if I had to decide, out of ten swords, I give it six swords. Seven? Six swords out of ten? Yes. You know what? I can't 
it's hard for me to rate this because I don't know what a mead really is supposed to be like. So I'm just going to take this as it is, as a drink that isn't supposed to be like a beer, and I'll probably give it a six and a half out of ten myself. Aha! Uh -huh. Not far from this guy. So that's about it. Thanks for joining us on another one of Chris's beer reviews. Have fun. Don't drink and drive. Yeah, just, just drink responsibly, you freaks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just. Uh, 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 uh.